How are you doing, math learners? This is your free access math teacher, Ash, and welcome to ML with Sir Ash. For today's lesson, we're going to discuss trapezoids. In this video, you will learn the definition of a trapezoid and know the different parts of a trapezoid. You will also learn the different kinds of trapezoids. In addition, you will also learn the properties of an isosceles trapezoid as well as solve different problems involving trapezoid. Furthermore, in this video, you will also learn the midline segment theorem which is a part of the concept in triangles but that concept is also applied in solving problems among trapezoids. But before anything else, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Okay, math learners, welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. Today, we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency-based lesson for quarter 3 of the grade 9 mathematics, which is all about trapezoids. The first question is, what is a trapezoid? A trapezoid is basically a quadrilateral in which it has exactly one pair of parallel sides, meaning the other pair of sides are not parallel. Now, in trapezoids, this is not connected to parallelograms because the parallelograms, as we have discussed in our previous videos, has two pairs of parallel sides. In addition, trapezoid has these following parts. We have the bases. These are the sides that are parallel. We also have the legs. And these are the sides of the trapezoids that are not parallel. We also have the diagonals in which these are the line segments that connect from one point to the opposite point. And we also have what we call the median. The median is the line segment that connects the midpoints of the legs. This is also a line segment that is both parallel to the bases of the trapezoid. Now, among these parts, we also have what we call the base angles. The base angles are angles that can be seen on the base of the trapezoid. So if this is one base, the base angles are here. If this is the base of the trapezoid, the base angles are here. Okay, now, among the concept of trapezoids, earlier I have shared the median. The median comes from the concept of the midline segment theorem. The midline segment theorem is actually originated from the concept of triangles. If this is a triangle, the midline segment theorem states that if you draw a line segment that connects the midpoint of two sides of the triangle here, basically that median is parallel to the third side. The length of that median is equal to one half the measurement of the third side. Now applying that concept in trapezoids, if you have a median the length of the median is basically half the sum of the two bases. Meaning that if you add the first base and the second base, divide it by two, you will get the length of your median. Sounds easy, right? Now, let us go to the properties of a trapezoid. Now, among the properties of a trapezoid, the trapezoid can have properties if the trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid. Basically, trapezoids can be divided into two groups. The first one is the non-isosceles trapezoid and the second one is the isosceles trapezoid. The non-isosceles trapezoid has legs that are not equal while the isosceles trapezoids have legs that are equal. Now, if you have an isosceles trapezoid, you will have three different properties. The first property states that in an isosceles trapezoid, legs are equal. Property number two of an isosceles trapezoid states that diagonals are equal or congruent. And the third property is that base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are equal. Now, for you to understand deeper on solving problems involving trapezoids, let us go to our discussion board. Okay, math learners, we are now in our first figure in solving problems about trapezoids. 
Now, we have here the trapezoid. Now, as you can see, this is a non-isosceles trapezoid because the legs are not equal. However, in this figure, you can also see a median that is being drawn. Okay, now the problem here is that how do we find the value of x, y, and z? Okay, the x here is the base 2 of this trapezoid. The y here is the angle, which is a base angle. And z here is another angle in the median. Okay, now let's start first with x. So x here is the length of one of the bases. Okay, so how do we get this one? Remember, I told you earlier that if you have this concept of the midline segment theorem, it states that if you add the first base and the second base, divide it by 2, you will get your median. So basically, in order for us to solve for x, we just have to get the base 1 plus the base 2 over 2 and you will have the median. Okay? So now, let us try to substitute our given. Our base 1 is already there. That is 11 meters plus our base 2 that is our unknown that is x over 2 is equal to our m, the median, which is 15 meters. So by applying what we have learned in solving the value of x, so we can apply here b cross multiplication. So we will multiply 2 to 15 so that this will become 11 plus x is equal to 30 because 2 times 15 is 30 and you have no denominators anymore except for the value of 1. Okay, now we can easily solve this by transposing our 11 to the right side. So we will have x is equal to 30 minus 11 and our final answer for that one is basically 19 meters. So therefore, the value of our x is 19 meters. Now, how do we know that we get our correct answer? You can just try to check by adding the first base to the second base, dividing it by 2. So 11 plus 19, that is 30. 30 divided by 2, and that is 15. So you are correct. Easy, right? Now, let us go to our y variable. So our y variable here is a base angle. So how do we do this one? My dear math learners, this would be very easy because of this given. As you can see, this one and this one are the same because this trapezoid, this small trapezoid, and this bigger trapezoid is basically similar. Now, what do we mean by similar? Remember the concept of similar polygons. If the figures are similar, meaning the sides are proportional, but the angles are congruent. So therefore, if this is 88 degrees, then this is also 88 degrees. And you have answered your y variable. Easy, right? Now, let us go to our last variable, which is z. Now, since here we have z, right? So if this is 95, basically this is also 95. But that is not our z. It is the angle above it. But because it is a straight angle, my dear math learners, the total measurement of a straight angle is 180 degrees. Having that said, if this is 95 degrees, then what is needed by 95 in order for it to become a 180 degree, then you need to have 85 degrees. So if this is 85, this is 95, adding them will give you 180 degrees, which is this line. So we have answered the unknowns of this given figure. Easy, right? Now let us go to our second figure. Okay, math learners, we are now to our second figure. And this is an example of an isosceles trapezoid. Why is that so? Because the legs are congruent due to this symbol. Okay, now here is the given. If the perimeter is 34 centimeter, solve for the value of x and the value of y. Okay. Now, my dear math learners, let's start first with our x. x here is an angle. Now, if you could still remember the properties of an isosceles trapezoid, it states there that the base angles are congruent. Now, if this is 84, this is also 84 degrees because the base angles are congruent. Of course, if this is x, 
then this is also x. Right? Now, my dear math learners, always remember that the total measurement of the angles in a given quadrilateral, regardless of the kind of quadrilateral you have, it will always be 360 degrees. Therefore, if you have 360 degrees as the total, and you will add the first 84 degrees, plus the second 84 degrees, plus the two values of x's, basically, you will have 360 degrees is equal to 84 plus 84, that is 168 degrees, plus x plus x, that is 2x. Then, you transpose the 168 to the other side, giving you 360 minus 168 is equal to 2x. Now, by subtracting this, you will have 2x here on the right side, and 360 minus 160, that will give you 200, so minus 8, that is 192 degrees as the total of these two angles. However, we just need one angle, so you divide this by 2, and x now will be equal to 96 degrees. So therefore, the measurement of the value for x is 96 degrees. Easy, right? Now, my dear math learners, I will also give you a quick tip. You don't need to use the 360 degrees. Why is that so? This is the technique, my dear math learners. If you have this kind of trapezoid, one base angles and another base angles from the other base is basically supplementary with each other. Meaning, their total measurement is 180 degrees. So therefore, if you have 84 and you ask yourself what is needed by 84 in order for it to become 180 degrees, basically the answer is 96. So, that is 96. That is also 96. So giving you 180, this is also 180, and the total of this one is 360 degrees. Easy, right? Now, let us go to our next variable, and that is y. Y here is basically a part of the sides. So if this is the case, my dear math learners, now, given here is the perimeter. Perimeter is the sum of all sides. Now, if this is y minus 2, this is y, this is y plus 2, of course, this other side is also y plus 2. So basically, in order for you to get the value of y, you will just add all the expressions, equate it to 34 centimeters, and you will have the value of your y. How do we do that? Okay, so this is the technique. We have y plus y minus 2 plus y plus 2 plus y plus 2 is equal to 34. So the y here is this one. The y minus 2 is this one. The y plus 2, y plus 2 are these two measurements of the legs. Having this simplified, you will have 4y, then 2 or negative 2 plus 2, that will be 0 plus 2, so that is still 2 here, equals to 34. We apply the concept of algebra. We transpose the plus 2 to the other side, giving us 34 minus 2. So we have 4y is equal to 32, dividing both sides by 4, and you will have the value of your y as 8. So therefore, the value of your y is 8. So if you want to get the actual measurement of this one, so this is 8. This is 10, because 8 plus 2 is 10, and this is 6. So if we add 10 plus 10, that is 20, 20 plus 8, that is 28, 28 plus 6, and that is a total of 34 centimeters, which is your perimeter. So we have answered all of the questions of this problem. Easy, right? Now let us go to our final figure. Okay, math learners, we are down to our final figure. And this is the trapezoid OKAY. This is still an example of an isosceles trapezoid because the legs are congruent. Okay, now here is the given. The measurement of line segment OA, which is the diagonal, is equal to 10 centimeters. And the measurement of angle KOY, KOY is 112. So this is the one. So that is 112 degrees. Question is, how do we find the value of the line segment KY? The measurement of angle OKA, OKA, so this is the one, and OYA, 
O Y A. So this is also the unknown. Okay. Now my dear math learners, O A here is the diagonal. K Y here, the line segment K Y is also another diagonal. Since this is an isosceles trapezoid, therefore the legs are congruent. And one of the properties of an isosceles trapezoid is that diagonals are also congruent. So basically, the measurement of this one is also the same as the measurement of that one. So therefore, our line segment KY is also 10 centimeters. Easy, right? Now let us go to our measurement of angle OKA. So since given, we have the KOY, which is 112. So this is 112. And OKA is here. Of course, one of the properties of an isosceles trapezoid states that base angles are congruent. This is a base angle and another base angle is here because they are talking with the same base. So therefore, this is also 112 degrees. And last but not least, we have the measurement of angle OYA. As what I said earlier in my tip on getting the other measurement of the base angle, if you have an isosceles trapezoid, this angle and this angle are supplementary. So what you will do is, you just ask yourself, what is needed by 112 degrees in order for it to become a 180 degree angle? And that is basically 180 minus 112. And the answer for that one is 68 degrees. Because 68 plus 112 is 180 degrees. So you have answered all the problems in this given figure. So now, my dear math learners, I hope you have a concrete understanding on trapezoids. Now, this is the time that I will challenge you whether you have understood our topic. And here it is. Okay, math learners, I hope you have a wonderful time in learning the concept of trapezoids. If you do have some questions about our topic, feel free to put your comments in our comment section below. This is still your free access math teacher Ash. And always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you so much, God bless, and keep safe always. Congratulations, math learners, for arriving to this part of the video. If you think that this video have helped you, click that like button. And if you think that this channel can change the way you see mathematics, do not forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you.